With insect-eating lizards, and even some snake species, we emphasise the importance of variety and try to offer as many different types of insect feeders as possible. We understand that the animals would find a vast variety of food items in the wild, and we do our best to emulate that in captivity. So why then, when the same is true for snakes in the wild, do lots of keepers keep snakes on a monoculture diet of mice or rats, when we have much more available to us to feed us? snakes and what else can we feed that's coming up if you want to stay up to date with science-based care for your reptiles then click the subscribe button and press the bell icon for future information so I think the most important thing for us to start on is why. Why do we need to feed more than just mice or rats? And the answer to that is, to best keep an animal in captivity, we must carefully consider and understand its natural history. So what do our pets eat in the wild? Yes, I know that's a very broad question, but luckily for us, there is scientific data out there. There's data out there, not only on what is being eaten, but what percentage of the diet is mammal, bird or reptile, etc. We often see people keep, say, a royal python on rats all its adult life, when in reality this doesn't actually reflect their natural history at all. There are papers on royal pythons wild diets out there, and the results may be far from what you'd expect. For example, this study on sexual dimorphism in royal pythons found differences in diets between the sexes. These results were found by faecal examination and forced regurgitation of stomach contents. Snakes smaller than 70 centimeters, or just over 2 feet, almost exclusively fed on small birds, i.e. nestlings or immature birds. Both sexes fed exclusively on birds and mammals, with a significant difference between the sexes. Birds made up to 70.2% of the male's diet. Yes, that's right, 70% of the diet of a male royal python is birds. And then on the flip side, females' diets were made up of 66.7% mammals. When individuals over 100 centimeters are concerned, the diet is almost exclusively small mammals. This study also identified what the prey item was down to the species level, if possible. In this table, they listed what they found, with the bird portion of the diet, Turtus sp, and I think that's a typo, and it refers to the genus Turtus, which is the group of thrushes, including the African thrush. Columbidae sp, these were unidentified species of pigeon. Cyticus erythicus, juve, which I assume juve refers to juvenile, which is the African grey parrot. Two of these were confirmed from regurgitation. Meropidae, which is the bee eater genus. There are 13 species in Nigeria. Silvidae, which is the warblers and barblers. There are 12 species in Nigeria. Nectarinia sp, these are the sunbirds. Sternidae, which is the starlings. Plosius, which is the weavers. And then the mammal portion of the diet, Crocodura sp, is the genus of shrews with a huge amount of species within it. Apomophorus is the genus of bats. Megaloglossus, wormani, which is the worm's fruit bat. Quictomys gambianus, which is the gambian pouch rat. Pyomys tolbergi, which is the tolberg's soft furred mouse. Muridae, which is the family that contains mice, rats, and gerbils. Lemniscomys striatus, which is a striped grouse mouse. Protoceros strangeri, which is the giant forest squirrel. And that is literally only what's been eaten at the time of study. We really don't know how diverse the diet actually is. But one thing we can be 100% sure on is that the diet is not made up of a single species. And if we take a look at this paper on the suitability of day-old chicks for snakes, we find a table of the taxonomic composition of wild diets of commonly kept snake species and a reference to the original papers per species. I'm not going to read out the entire table, but I will pick up some interesting pieces. Boa constricted diets were mostly birds and reptiles and only a quarter of the diet being mammals, let alone a single species of mammal. Lambropetus getula, which the Californian and Mexican black kingsnake subspecies belongs to, the diet is 60% reptiles, 12% birds, and only 27% mammals. Again, it's not a singular mammalian diet. Corn snakes eat 64% mammals, 22% birds, 10% reptiles, and 4% amphibians. I think you get the picture now. Nothing eats a solely single species diet. So how do we, as snake keepers, diversify our pets' diets? Lots of things are available frozen thawed now in the UK quite easily. I don't have any experience about what is available in the US, so I cannot speak for that. But you can now find the following frozen thawed in the UK. Mice, rats, multi-mammoths or African soft furs, gerbils, hamsters, quails, quail eggs, day old chicks, chickens, rabbits, guinea pigs, you can get quail eggs from supermarkets, frozen lizards or snakes if you ask a reptile shop or you know a friend who has culled some stock or has had some stock die. You can get frog's legs online and there's various fish species. There's also this idea that a snake must be fed from the same time period between every meal, which isn't the case. Varying the food item size, type and duration between feeds is both enriching and more natural. 
With my own personal snakes, I may feed a meal after 14 days, or I may feed two smaller meals in shorter succession. I may feed a large meal and then not feed for another month. When my king snake ate a corn snake, she wasn't fed for another 4 to 1 days. I may feed a handful of rat pups or a few quail eggs to simulate nest raiding. With the frozen frog's legs, you can get them in the UK from kingcrab.co.uk. You can buy 1 kilo's worth of frozen thawed frog's legs for £9.50. This isn't a whole prey item, but it adds variety to the diet that would otherwise be absent. What I like to do personally is say I buy 10 large mice in a pack of 10, I might buy 10 chicks in a pack of 10. On every second or other feed I'll go to the reptile shop and buy a singular item for that exact feed, whether that's a hamster or a quail or a snake. Whatever the main food item you're currently using, you can still buy that in bulk and then frame adding other items to the diet around that baseline feeder. I think we owe it to our animals to do our very best. Yes, we may not be able to entirely replicate their exact wild diet, but even including a few more new prey items and slowly expanding the diet as you go is better than nothing. Some people are so set on feeding the snake the exact same size meal in the same way after the same amount of days, I promise you varying prey type is not going to harm the snake. And I know what some people will say, this snake is a tricky feeder, I'm not going to deviate from my diet. Well fair enough. I say, does that snake have UVB? Does that snake have near-infrared heat sources? I truly believe some of the pickiness and behavioural issues we find of our snakes are down to our own misunderstanding of the natural history of the species we keep. And of course our own actions lead to issues. For example, people found out nearly half a century ago that if you gave a snake UVB and that snake was a non-feeder, it would reinitiate with feeding after being given UVB. And if you think that's ridiculous, snakes don't need UVB. Click the video on the left for my video explaining exactly why snakes need UVB and I back that up with multiple studies. And if you found this type of video interesting, click on the playlist on the right for other reptile channels that I recommend. Honestly, you'll be amazed at what some of the things people are up to.